Hello health champions! How do you know if you're truly fat adapted? Well, if you're still having cravings and ravenous hunger and sugar cravings, then you're probably not fat adapted yet. So today we're going to talk about what fat adaptation is and we're going to give you 10 signs to tell if you're getting into true fat adaptation. Coming right up. Hey, I'm Dr. Ekberg. I'm a holistic doctor and a former Olympic decathlete. And if you want to truly master health by understanding how the body really works, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. So what is fat adaptation? Fat adaptation simply means that your body has the ability to burn fat when mostly fat is available. Another way of looking at that is called metabolic flexibility. So if mostly carbs or mostly fat or mostly protein or a mix of all of those are available, then the body does just fine. It has the metabolic machinery to switch from one to the other on very short notice. That's metabolic flexibility. And the only reason that this is even an issue is that we have trained our body away from being fat adapted. We've trained the body away from metabolic flexibility by having a couple of generations of people who have had virtually nothing but carbohydrate. And carbohydrate is a fuel that raises blood sugar, which is dangerous to the brain. That's why an excess leads to diabetes and neurological problems and so forth. So the body has to dispose of the carbohydrates first. And if we eat frequent carbohydrates, then the body never really gets to anything but the carbohydrates. They become the priority and the body becomes dependent. So that is the reason that if you're carb dependent, you've shifted all your metabolic machinery over to carbohydrates. So now when the carbohydrates disappear, when you eat, go on a low carb diet, your body says, I've got no food. I don't recognize where my regular food is. I'm starving. Even though all that fat is available, both in the diet, if you eat a high fat diet and on the body, your body doesn't have access to it because it has to retrain and become fat adapted. And what that means is it has to upregulate all the cellular machinery, all the receptors and the enzymes and the mitochondria involved in fat metabolism. And that takes a while. It can take a couple of weeks if it has been totally basically shut down. Ketosis is something that's measured together with fat adaptation because ketones is a byproduct of fat burning. So if you're in fat burning, you're making ketones, you're in ketosis but they're not really the same thing because you can have some ketosis without being fat adapted. So every night when you're sleeping and every morning when you wake up, you have some ketones. Even if you have a carb dependent metabolism, during the night you go eight to 10 hours without food and your body shifts a little bit. But then if you're carb adapted, you go straight up and you have toast and orange juice and cereal and oatmeal and you fill up the glycogen stores and the body forgets all about burning fat. So you never get into being fat adapted. So even though you can have a little bit of ketosis from time to time, it doesn't make you fat adapted. So we need to understand that difference. And I heard some people talk about this. So I wanted to make a comment about diuresis. They said that diuresis is a sign of being fat burning and it's not. It's even less so than the ketosis because diuresis is when you lose fluids that have been bound up in the body. And the reason is that glycogen, which you can store carbohydrates as glycogen, you can store about 1500 grams, about three pounds, three to four pounds. And that binds about three to four times its weight in water. It's like a sponge. It holds water to it. So when you burn through the glycogen stores, that water has nothing to hold on to and you flush it straight out. So the first five, six, seven pounds that you lose on a low carb diet is water. 
and that's normal and that's okay but it doesn't mean you're burning fat or that you're fat adapted it just means you're reducing your glycogen stores which is a good thing on the way to becoming fat adapted another thing i heard was that you're fat adapted when you burn through all the glucose that's lingering that it can take a couple of weeks to become fat adapted because glucose is lingering and that's just not how it works because your body makes glucose all the time even when you're completely fasting your body makes glucose because you still even in a ketosis even in a fasting state you still are going to maintain a blue glucose of in the 70, 75, 80 range. So glucose does not linger. You burn through the stores pretty quickly and then your body makes it as needed. Has really nothing to do with whether you're fat adapted or not. So how long does it take to become fat adapted to where your body is metabolically flexible again? Well, it depends primarily on two things. It depends on how insulin resistant you are the more insulin resistant you are, the higher your fasting insulin, the tougher it's going to be for you to be fat adapted because that high insulin level locks the fat away. So even though you're eating the fat, you're kind of burning it, but your body can't see the, the body fat. So you're not truly fat adapted because you're still going to get hungry because you're depending on dietary fuel because of that high insulin level. The other factor is how long have you been insulin resistant and how long have you been carb dependent. If it's been going for a decade or two then you can probably count on two to six weeks for your body to completely shift its machinery and that's if you're very consistent. You have to be patient. Here's the good news though. If you are consistent with it if you truly become fat adapted so if you've been on a low carb diet myself for example i've been low carb for probably 10 years i've been in and out of keto probably been in low grade keto for 80 percent of the time for those last 10 years so if i go on a vacation and i do a little carb loading i make a few exceptions and I eat more carbs, then I notice immediately I get hungrier. I got to have frequent meals. My body is screaming for food. But if I come home and I just cut out the carbs, then I'm back in true fat adaptation in 24 to 48 hours because I do have the metabolic flexibility. So that's the good news. Once you get this done right, then you don't have to do it over and over and over. It gets easier and easier. So here are the 10 signs that you are getting fat adapted. Number one thing you're going to notice is less hunger. You eat your meals and you're not super hungry between meals. You don't need snacks, etc. Just overall less hunger. Number two, less carb cravings. You don't feel like when you're eating a meal that, oh, I have to have that rice, I have to have that potato. A lot of people, they can't just have meat and vegetables. They don't feel satisfied unless they have also stuffed in some carbs. Number three is you don't feel the need for snacks. A lot of people have been told and trained to have three meals plus three snacks plus an evening meal maybe. But as you get fat adapted, your, everything levels out and you notice that there's no problem at all skipping the snacks. Number four, no ravenous hunger. So the character of your hunger changes too. That some people, they just get totally out of control. They can't function. They get sleepy. They get headaches. They get irritable. They get angry. They go out of their mind. Their body is screaming for food that all goes away. You're not going to have that kind of hunger anymore. And then you'll wake up one morning and notice you want to skip a meal. It's like, I'm not hungry. And that's something that you should take the cue that don't eat if you're not hungry. Your body is trying to tell you something. It has plenty of food. It has plenty of energy resources. Just leave it alone and skip the meal. Sign number six is you'll notice you get fat cravings that when you eat a meal, 
you want it to be really fatty. If it's not dripping with butter, if it's not a lot of, of fat in there, your body senses that it's missing something. So then you're wondering, well, now I just replaced a carb craving for a fat craving. No, not really. It's just that when you're eating, your body knows it wants that dense, concentrated, high quality fuel. And with a carb craving, you're perpetuating the problem. With a carb craving, you're creating a blood sugar roller coaster. With a fat craving, you're just providing your body a stable fuel that it needs. And if you eat it when your body asks for it, you'll notice that it becomes easier and easier and easier to go longer without food. Something else you might notice at this point is that if you get up in the morning and you forget to eat breakfast, like on a weekend and you get busy with something, you go out in the yard and all of a sudden it's five in the afternoon and you haven't eaten anything. And you didn't really think about it because your body is fat adapted. It has a stable source of fuel. You don't need all that snacks. That's a great sign that you're fat adapted. Another interesting sign is ketone strips because when you first start burning fat and you're making some ketones, a lot of them are gonna spill out in the urine. So the ketone strips that you pee on, they measure the ketones that get out of the body. But as you get more and more fat adapted, your body produces more ketones and you would expect that ketone strips to show a higher rate of ketones, but instead they start showing a lower number, maybe even just a trace. And that's because even though you're making more ketones, your body has upregulated its machinery to burn not just fat, but also to utilize the ketones. And now your body is using them instead of spilling them out in the urine. So at first, the ketone strips are gonna show increasing amounts and then they're gonna show decreasing amounts. And that's a great sign. Sign number eight, no mood swings. Because a lot of mood swings have to do with blood sugar and they have to do with energy supply. So if you're carb dependent, you're gonna have blood sugar swings. As you get fat adapted, you have virtually no blood sugar swings. Today I measured my glucose and it was 80 before I ate. And then I had a very large meal, 1500 calories or so. And afterwards, my blood sugar was 101. So they're very, very slight changes in blood sugar and that reflects in your mood. Number nine, it's also going to reflect in your energy level because your mood and your energy often go together. So when your energy supply is stable, then you always have energy throughout the day. So some people experience much better energy, but primarily what you'll notice is stable energy. You're not dependent on food. You're not dependent on snacks to function. Sign number 10, mental clarity. Ketones is a fantastic fuel for the brain. It likes it much better than glucose, actually. And it's a more stable fuel. Plus, when you become fat adapted, you've also decreased the inflammation in the body. You've decreased inflammation from grains and sugar, but also because insulin in itself drives inflammation and inflammatory processes. So when you bring insulin down and become fat adapted, now the brain has more stable and it has better fuel and less inflammation. So for a lot of people, this shows up as mental clarity. The brain fog lifts and they can think, they can live in a way that they never have felt for years. Now it's important to understand that while most people will experience most of these signs, not everyone is gonna experience all of them. And that goes especially for the last two, the energy and the mental clarity, because there's so many other factors that influence that. And primarily we're talking about people with sensitivities and autoimmunity and other sources of inflammation and maybe hypothyroid. So. If you're not getting all 10, then chances are that you have a little bit more of a complex situation. You're not in the 80 or 90%, but don't despair. Just keep being consistent with these things and then maybe look for some help from someone who can help you iron out those last few details. And then a little bonus for you. 
And this is kind of interesting. It's not necessarily due to fat adaptation per se. It might be more due to habits and neuroplasticity. But here's a fact, your taste buds will change. And this is a good thing because people think that, oh, I can never eat that way because I'm used to eating this way. Well, you can change your taste. And one way that you'll notice, the first thing that you'll notice is that things that you used to like that were sweet now taste nauseatingly sweet. So for one example, milk chocolate. If you used to love milk chocolate and you taste it now, it would taste almost disgusting. It would be so sweet, so nauseating. Of course, nowadays you don't eat milk chocolate, so you wouldn't know how that tastes, but I'm just saying hypothetically. And if you were to fast for a couple of days and then you come back and you eat a piece of 85% chocolate, it will be like the sweetest thing you ever tasted. This is a good thing because you can learn to eat things. You can learn to like things. Everything that you think you like is because you learn to like it. So just learn to like the things that you know are better for you. Simple as that. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out that one. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.